Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the Gigabyte GA78LMT-S2P AM3 Plus motherboard. Installed in the CPU socket is the Phenom 2X61090T. The Phenom has no integrated graphics, but unlike today's non-APU Ryzen chips, we don't need a discrete graphics card to get a display on our monitor. The reason for that is because the motherboard itself has an onboard GPU. It's not very good and it never was, but it does mean that we can use this processor in a system without a graphics card. Not only that, but we can overclock these motherboard graphics too. We've tried gaming on motherboard graphics before using a different CPU and motherboard chipset, but I've got to talk about overclocking because as you'll see, it's possible to get some pretty decent gains, even if gaming performance is still terrible for the most part. It all starts with the BIOS. To overclock onboard graphics, we need to get into the BIOS in the case of this board by hitting the delete key on boot. From there, we go into the advanced BIOS features menu and then IGX configuration. Here we've got all the options regarding our onboard Radeon 3000 GPU. The frame buffer size can be left at auto, that way the system can automatically decide how much memory to allocate to certain tasks rather than it be limited by us. What we want to change is the core clock control. By default, the onboard graphics are clocked at just 350 megahertz, but I found that this can be doubled to 700 without adjusting anything else. That's a 100% overclock straight out of the box. I then added this system fan into the equation just to direct some cool air onto the chipset's heatsink. How effective this was, well, I don't know, but it made me feel better about my haphazard frequency increase. Please excuse the quality of the gameplay footage today, but this was captured one to one, so what you're seeing here is exactly what you'll get, apart from the compression after upload, etc. Also, please forgive my enthusiasm with the onboard metrics. I wrote HD 3000 graphics, but there's nothing HD about any of this, so let's just cross that out, shall we? The game I tested first of all, with nothing but our now overclocked onboard Radeon GPU was COD Black Ops. I've included some comparative results to the stock 350 megahertz results as well, so that I can show you just how much of a difference there is with the overclock. Black Ops at 800 by 600 with the lowest settings ran with over 30 FPS here. Now that doesn't sound great and it's definitely not consistently playable, but before overclocking the onboard motherboard graphics we were getting less than 25 FPS. Not to mention the 1.1% lows were quite a bit worse beforehand too. CSGO also went from terrible to not as terrible, with 30 FPS being achieved thanks to our overclock. Don't get me wrong, the 1.1% lows do mean that the experience overall isn't very consistent, just like before, and the remaining performance issues will likely affect your chances at remaining competitive, but an improvement is still an improvement, and with a 13 FPS increase to the average FPS metric, I can't complain, especially as this performance gain cost no money whatsoever. I didn't think overclocking motherboard graphics was possible until about three days ago, so to see it working and not catching on fire is a nice bonus. You might be wondering if a better CPU would produce better results. My assumption is no because the graphics are such a huge limitation here. I can't see extra CPU power helping out in any way because the GPU is so incredibly weak. Not as weak as it was, but still very weak. Time for an absolute classic now, and I don't think I was as adventurous as I could have been with the GTA San Andreas settings. I stuck with 800 by 600 and the low preset, albeit with draw distance, maxed out. We could have cranked the settings and resolution up a little bit, I'm sure, but at least these lower settings helped account for the 1 and 0.1% lows, which did drop under 60. So again, not a completely flawless experience, but I grew up playing this game at 25 FPS on PS2. I think the PAL version was 25 FPS anyway, so yeah, I'm not too fast. If we look at the on screen comparative results once again, it's clear to see another nice improvement with doubled clock speeds. I wonder if this is possible with Intel GMA graphics, because any help with my mum's old Celeron build would have been incredibly welcome to me 15 years ago. Let's move on to another GTA game then, one that still somehow runs on this old onboard solution. 
Grand Theft Auto 5 is up next. You'll have to excuse the fact that for some reason my capture card stretched the game to full screen during recording. Everything's a bit squashed. It looks like someone's overclocked the gravity. At 800 by 600 with 50% scaling and the lowest game settings, the game still wasn't playable, as expected. That said, it was still a bit better than the performance with stock speeds, so that's a plus. There was even a moment, possibly two, where I saw 30 FPS. Sure, I might have been looking at the sky, or at the ground, but I'll never forget that brief 30 frames per second experience. It reminded me of the first time I saw 60 FPS for the first time, after upgrading an old PC when I was a teenager. It was almost like I had seen a miracle, courtesy of an FX CPU and HD7870. I miss that rig. In Minecraft, the Windows edition, whatever it's called properly, we were even able to play at 1080p and hit nearly 60 frames per second with the overclocked onboard GPU. Sorry about the tiny MSI afterburner display in the top left corner. I was expecting another low resolution mess, so I didn't adjust it before recording. This is another game where the overclock made a big difference because our average figure jumped by nearly 20 FPS. Sure, we weren't doing much on screen here, just chopping down a few trees and building a base for my house in the forest that I'll finish at some point in the next decade. Still, this is probably the best result of the day, so far anyway, but can vanilla Skyrim do any better? The answer to that is, of course, no, which I think we were all expecting, but once again, our performance did go from not very playable to almost playable, sort of, and in some instances, 30 FPS was achievable. I'm not just talking about GTA 5 levels of achievable, like by looking at the floor or the sky, I'm talking about quite a common occurrence, even in busy areas like Riverwood. I might be a bit late to the party with this motherboard graphics overclocking stuff, I don't know, because it certainly would have helped me out a decade or so ago, that's for sure, when I was using my mum's PC with a Celeron 1200 and Intel GMA graphics. Then again, the motherboard was quite awful and it probably didn't have the ability to do this. If you do have a motherboard that's capable of this though, like my 760G chipset based one I've used today, and want to squeeze some more performance out of your system, well hopefully this video can still help some of you out. If not, well, it's certainly been fun seeing what effect this little bit of tweaking had on this old system. It took absolutely no effort to hit a 100% overclock either, and I thought we'd certainly run into a few blue screens here and there, but I'd still recommend adding an extra system fan, just in case, and maybe you want to stick everything on an open air test bench too. After all, fire isn't your friend, and you certainly don't want to end up with a bunch of fried components, if that's even possible to do when tweaking the onboard graphics. That's all for this video then, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't, let me know if you've ever tried this out, and if you have, I'd love to hear about your experiences down below in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.